This next clip features Brendan Schaub making the Conor McGregor documentary all about him. And I think this is clip is fucking incredible because this is the perfect encapsulation of why people hate Brendan. And also, I feel like it's a little bit of an example of why I think people sometimes go a bit overboard because I don't think this is a bad thing to do or say because that Conor McGregor documentary is pretty decent. And for somebody like a Brendan, considering how far his star has fallen, it probably was a big surprise and an honour for him to be featured in that pod. It's on Netflix. It's definitely, you know, a big, a, a, a popular one. People are watching. I think it's going to be released in parts. It's really entertaining, especially if you're a fan of Connor. Obviously, if you're if you're not the biggest fan of him, it's probably not the best representation of his career. It doesn't really feature any of the faux pas, any of the hitting of the old guy, the sexual assault allegations and shit. It's kind of a, you know, a really kind of positive spin on Connor's career. But still, it features a lot of the bits behind the scenes that you've probably never seen of him losing, how he reacts to it in the fucking locker room and stuff all that sort of footage we never would have seen if this documentary never came out is really cool to see and again considering how low regarded brendan is in the terms of mma punditry and journalism and being a talking head the fact that he was featured on that sh in the stream in the documentary like in full hd is something to kind of pat yourself on the back about you know the biggest star to come out of the ufc featuring you in there only because brent Schaub was the only person in media that was actually trying to convince people that brent conor mcgregor could win against floyd which he kind of caught me with a gas like brendan was that convincing that time so deluded that he was starting to convince me that conor could beat floyd Mayweather in a straight up boxing match which is fucking stupid to think about it at the time and clearly the results kind of paying that to be that so I don't, you know, I see both sides of this clip. But anyway, let me play it and stop blabbering so you can see what I mean. Um, We can jump into if you want. You know, what? I'll, I'll start with uh, I finally got around to the Conor McGregor documentary. Finally got around. I think it came out last week. I'm just saying I wasn't like ready at the minute it dropped to watch it like I'm a serial killer doc. But either way, um, I got around to it. Man. Weird, um, what a weird disclaimer though, isn't it? You watch everything else immediately when it comes out and you're, you're a known Conor McGregor nut hugger. Why would you put out that disclaimer? It's not a bad thing to just say, yeah, I watched it as soon as it come out. You you guys all know I'm a huge Conor McGregor nut hugger. He's the biggest star to come out of the UFC. I'm unapologetically going to be a fanboy of his forever because he changed the sport, blah, blah, blah. Let's just own up to it. It's not a bad thing to be a fanboy of one of the biggest stars in the fucking sport. I don't understand that. Like, we all know you are. So why are you putting out the disclaimer that I got oh, so busy? I only got around to it now. It's like, come on, bro. Just be honest. And despite how you feel about Conor McGregor, it is so well done. It is so damn good. And uh, I tweeted this out after I watched it. A, it's ridiculous. But I had a sense of sadness because that was such a great time. It, it was such a, a unique time in mixed martial arts that I'm sad because I don't think we'll ever see it again. Now, Do you, Doesn't that I'm sad sound similar? From, down from, sound familiar, sorry. Do you remember? I'm, I'm mad. I'm fucking... I'm, I'm sad. I'm fucking mad. That sounds very familiar, isn't it? That little I'm sad thing. But yeah, let, let me continue. Now, I know people, and Dana says this, and everybody says it. So when Magic and Bird retired, it's like, oh, what's the NBA going to do now? Or, you know, when Barry Sanders retired, what's the NFL going to do now? And the UFC, it's when Chuck Liddell retires, what, what is the UFC going to do now? I, no, I, I get that. This is different. This is different. Will the UFC have more generational talent? And are they going to have superstars? Of course. No doubt. There's going to be talent that we can't even imagine coming up in the next 10, 15 years. No doubt. And it, will, will they be more skilled than Connor? Yeah, because that's the evolution of the game. No doubt. I'm not saying that we're not going to have superstars in the UFC. What I'm saying is you're never going to have another Connor McGregor. And that makes me sad. You're just not. I think he changed the game forever. And you only get those once in a lifetime. And I think why it holds dear to my heart, too, is when he was coming up. You see? I just branched out on my own right i start so this is the real reason why it makes him sad because it's a weird thing to kind of make a point of like it makes him sad it's not gonna be another conor mcgregor 
I thought he would he was gonna say it makes him sad because it's never gonna be like that moment again. There's obviously gonna be another star that's gonna be as big as Connor. It's just the way sports works, but especially stuff like a UFC. But he made it more so. It's never gonna be another Connor, which basically means more so. He's never going to have that same period in his life when he was that guy back then where he was really pally-pally with Joe Rogan and everything was going amazing on TFAT K and Chris Lee hadn't been cancelled and Brian Callan hadn't been accused of rape and all everything was fucking rosy. That's when it, it's not going to go back to. That's the issue he has because he's still successful by this definition, but that golden era uh, when he was in part of the Rat Pack, that's never going to come back again. That's what he basically is trying to say started with fighting the kid and then i wanted to talk fighting specifically because you know brian cal knows fighting loves fighting but you know sometimes he doesn't watch it and he's not in the weeds like i am so i want to do my own thing so that's when i started the big brown breakdown that just so happens when i started connor's rise started so it's close to my heart because to me that was such a special time and to comparing yourself to conor mcgregor is fucking hilarious but look I just, you know, I got to let him land and I think it's fine because he should look back on that time with fondness because that was a great moment in time to look back on his career. The fact that he was working for Showtime, he was able to get the, I think if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Brendan did create the kind of UFC MMA division there by default because he had the short show even though it started like a bit of a sketch show type of thing and serious show with this blazer because the early episodes of the short show are funny where he's kind of wearing a blazer and they're trying to get him to read a teleprompter and he just cannot read to save his life right but he basically started in that way and it kind of solidified his position there as a color no, as a as a talking head and whatnot and that was great and the times they were awesome with rogan and the old studio in LA and the comedy store and driving up to the comedy store garage, like he always says, and he's Porsche and he's Ferrari talking with all the other comedians, right? I don't blame him for looking fondly on it. It's just hilarious to see him like in this part of his career where he's already looking back at those heady years and thinking, fuck man, I, I took it for granted. He's starting to realize, even though he's successful still now, he's like, I did take that shit for granted back then. Like life isn't as sweet as it is now. Life isn't sweet now as it was back then. But hey, what can you do? cover it right and to go through that and for a guy of conor mcgregor's stature to to say the things that he did and pull it off it's just so rare because now you know you have guys that are mimicking connor and saying the, all these things and they're not fulfilling that right they're not they're doing it because they think it's what they need to do to sell the fight Connor was the guy doing it because that's what he truly believed in his heart and eventually we all believed it it was very, you know, when Muhammad Ali would say these crazy things, you know, and it got all this traction, you never really saw that before. And he would guarantee this and I'll beat him here. And it was very similar to Conor McGregor though. It was, a, it was a magical time. It was a magical time, straight up magical time. Is he gonna cry? <laughs> Is this nigga gonna cry about Conor McGregor? When he's actually crying about his career? Because I think what he's actually saying the death of Conor McGregor's career was the death of actually his career. Oddly enough, actually, there might be some correlation. If you're a fucking homeless cat out there, there might be some correlation between Conor losing to Khabib and Brendan's career going down the pan. Or maybe how it's, or no, not his career, his perception and how he's viewed amongst his peers. Because I still think the fact that he's able to make millions being redacted as he is, not being able to speak, not be able to put coherent thoughts together, creating subpar content is amazing. That should still be a success to him because I feel like the fact that you're not working in Target or in a bar somewhere and you get to make content like this and make millions should always be something that you should always be thanking the fucking Lord up above. Like, I don't have to work and clock in every day like I have to do at regular jobs. I'm sure that most of you have to do. That should always be a thank God, right? Most of these guys, especially the ones that get accused of like rape and diddling kids, you should always be like looking up at the stars saying, oh my God, thank you so much for allowing me the ability to be able to just talk in front of a microphone and spread my nonsense opinions and be completely unfunny and still make loads of money. It's amazing thank you lord that's what you should be successful about but i'm sure these guys they all want more they want everything they want the good times to last forever they don't ever see it ever ending and they take it for granted so it wouldn't surprise me if there is some correlation between connor losing that fight to khabib and brendan's you know 
way he's perceived amongst his peers, especially amongst Rogan, going down the pan. I'm sure some homeless cats can make some correlation, some graphs and figure it out, but I'm sure there's something in there. Again, it could be one of my hot, my terrible hot takes, but I'm sure I'm right. I mean, when I was watching that documentary and it was going back over the stuff, Hold I was on. like, oh. Hold on, what do you say? How do you say documentary there? Let's rewind that. What do you say? And it was going back over the magical time. I mean, when I was watching that documentary okay, and sorry, it I was thought, going back over. I thought you said, I thought you said something else. I thought you said documentary. I said dog. Okay. When I was watching that documentary and it was going back over the stuff, I was like, oh my, I mean, some of it, you know, because I'm covering this all the time in the fight world. So you're like, oh, what a special time, man. Like when, <laughs> when they showed just the way in for a Connor fight and you car. see Dublin flying across the goddamn pond and it's packed with fans from Dublin or a press conference and the stuff you do at the press conference. It was not, we don't have, this is no disrespect to anybody in the UFC right now. We no, you're disrespecting everybody, by the way. Do not have that right now. <laughs> Where it's everybody shuts down and tunes in to what one fighter's doing. We don't have that. This is basically his justification for not doing his research or watching tape or getting familiar with fight cards. This is basically his justification in a way. Because there's not a big star like Connor, no card is a real big draw. No one is really moving seats or really kind of selling pay-per-views and shit. So what's the point? I just kind of figure out when I get news from Chin. What else you got, Chin? What else you got, Chin? What else you got, Chin? All the way through the fucking UFC fucking fight cards and news and shit. That's his kind of justification for it a little bit. But again, I don't blame the guy for reminiscing on good times because let's be honest, there were some special times when T-Fat K was on fire, when... When no one knew Brian Callum may or may not be a rapist, when Chris Leah hadn't been accused of diddling kids, that show was fucking on fire. Let's not lie. Let's not fucking lie. Um, and it's no surprise that his career also was doing great. Going to the comedy store, even though he wasn't passed, selling out shows all over the place, um, merch flying out of the door. It was a good time. So I'm not surprised that he's looking back on it with some level of funness. So I can't, you know, I can't begrudge the guy for looking back at his heady days with that level of fondness, it makes a lot of sense. 